on behalf of all the people around the world whose hearts are bleeding, whose eyes are weeping, please open your gates for us and allow us to proceed to besiege Palestine. They broke through the Israeli blockade with their trucks and ambulances, but it wasn't enough. The siege continued and so did the suffering. Now the volunteers are back and this time they're being joined by even more friends from across the world. They have only one objective, to provide the people of Gaza with a lifeline as the walls continue to close in. But it will not be easy and blood will be spilled as their resolve is tested. After spending three weeks on the road, the convoy has been brought to a grinding halt in the port of Aqaba, with the Egyptian government refusing it entry into the Sinai. Instead, it's demanding the convoy enter Egypt from the north. That means a massive detour. The standoff lasts several days, and diplomatic efforts to resolve the impasse fail, despite the involvement of the Turkish government. There is a growing sense of frustration as the days pass and the aid in the vehicles begins to spoil in the desert heat. We told Egypt, if you desire to win the world's heart, just let us pass through Aqaba. If you like, you can put your own drivers in our vehicles. The important thing for us, we said, is to pass through Egypt to Gaza without having to take permission from Israel. Egypt accepted all our other conditions, but insisted we turn back to Latakia. This was a 1,000 kilometer detour. With it becoming increasingly apparent that the Egyptian authorities are not willing to back down, the organizers bite the bullet and turn the convoy around. We are sorry that we will have to make a very long drive tomorrow at very great expense, but from the beginning, this humanitarian convoy has been about arriving in Gaza and that we will achieve. Preparations begin for the long drive along the dusty highway to Syria from where the convoy will sail to the northern Egyptian port of Al Arish. But first, time for an assessment of the driver's provisions remaining on board. After the hardships we've been put through by the Egyptian government, uh, we discovered mould on our oranges, and I blame Hosni Mubarak personally. Thank you. Despite the frustration at having to waste fuel and money backtracking across Jordan and Syria, everyone accepts that there's no other choice. That's the key to this trip, being on the road and getting somewhere. Even though we're backtracking today, hopefully we're going to be going backwards to go forward. Sometimes you have to do that in life, my friend. Everyone wants to get to the Syrian border before nightfall, but some find that fate is not on their side. All the time that we're spending on this is time that we're not spending driving, which really, this, the whole part of this journey is quite needless. You know, it's going to be two or three days trip, and it's not really the time when we want to be losing miles or losing hours. Finally, the van is back on the road and Kim, Joel and Omran catch up with the rest of their team. For many, just being on the move again has been a major morale booster. Getting back on the road now is, just feels fantastic. You know, we haven't driven our vans for a few days. It feels good to get back in, feel like you're proactively doing something. But there's bad news awaiting them. Take care of yourselves and never forget this. Not just me, but never forget this. It's an experience of a lifetime. And I hope that I see everybody when you get back 
Because if you don't, I'm going to come knocking on your doors. Imran's passport has gone missing and with more borders ahead, he can't continue the journey. Determined that his ambulance reach its intended recipients, he signs over the papers and keys to one of the other volunteers. It's another emotional moment for Team F. Morning in Damascus and it's time to assess the situation. The new route is prohibitively expensive. It involves chartering a cargo ferry for the vehicles and a plane for the drivers to take everyone to Egypt. We had a discussion, the leadership, myself and George, with Brother Brulant and others from the Ihaha. The friends, the brothers and sisters from the Ihaha have volunteered to make up the difference. They volunteered to make up the difference. But with the good news comes a warning of the challenges that still remain ahead. Although negotiations with the Egyptian authorities have moved forwards, many issues remain unclear. Matthias Chang has just returned from talks in Cairo and says the Egyptians still haven't given full assurances that the convoy will get through Rafah. Well, did it say that they are in a difficult, difficult uh, situation with the V Israel? They have a fragile peace treaty and that they don't want to give any excuse to Israel to create problems. But it doesn't apply to our situation here. We are not challenging anybody. We are here, as I said before, to provide humanitarian aid to Gaza. So why would baby milk, diagnostic medical equipment, be construed as a challenge or provide an excuse for Israel to do anything towards Egypt? It doesn't arise, the issue doesn't arise. There are, are, are still to be, we should anticipate, difficulties in al -Arish. They've said, come to al and you can go in, okay? But those of us who went to Saloum found that not everybody got in. I'm looking at Brother Akil, where four people stopped at the border. There was no forewarning of that back in March. Those of us on the US convoy, they said, yes, everybody can go in, but without the vehicles. We should expect anything and everything. That eagle on that flag looks both ways. It doesn't look like it, but believe me, it looks both ways. And its tongue is like this. We should expect anything. The move to the coast begins. The multinational convoy now also has a contingent of Jordanian vehicles on board, and together everyone heads for the seaport of Latakia. The town is home to a community of Palestinian refugees, long forgotten and living in poverty. Despite their own poor living conditions, they're overjoyed at the sight of the convoy, headed to help their friends and family trapped in Gaza. You're going to Gaza, and we will be victorious. Inshallah, we will be victorious. So they thought they could block us, but we've gone by land, we're going by sea, we're going by air, we're going to Gaza, we're going to Gaza. It's a bittersweet moment. Some of the Palestinians plead to be allowed onto the convoy, but in a painful example of the implications of the siege and the occupation, the convoy must, with great regret, refuse them. Both parties know that in reality the Egyptian authorities will turn them back, perhaps even arrest them, jeopardizing the aid that does have a chance of getting through. But the locals and the convoy drivers put their troubles aside for a few hours as they watch the Syrian coast light up, ushering in a new year. The next morning, just hours before the vehicles are due to be loaded onto the ferry, the US group's fleet of cars and trucks arrives, there to be donated to various hospitals and projects in Gaza. Now numbering around 200 vehicles, the convoy assembles at the seaport of Latakia. From here, it will be in the hands of the ship's crew. Maritime law only allows for a small, limited number of passengers on cargo ships. And so, behind the smiles is a real concern shared by the convoy's collective over the fate of the vehicles when they reach Egyptian shores. There are fears that they may be impounded, bringing a premature end to the humanitarian effort. They're playing a game, and to some extent, 
they even if they intend to let us in, they have to show a show of strength and some delay to placate Israel, I believe. I think ultimately they're going to let us in. Totally denying us access once we're an embarrassment on their soil is unlikely. They will just keep delaying us and causing problems. And, you know, they're taking a short-term view that they'd like us to make a mistake that will allow them to deny us access in a way that, you know, is, is legal. They're also taking a long-term view. You know, the more they disrupt us, the more they hope we won't try it again. And I think, they, you know, they, they couldn't be more wrong in that. A day later, the drivers start boarding the flight to Al Arish. But the plane will have to make four separate journeys to get everyone over. The first flight boards with optimism, but things are about to get far more complicated. The ship's been making its way south on the Mediterranean Sea. The route's been plotted so as to steer clear of Israeli waters at the expense of a longer journey time. Nonetheless, the Israeli Navy has intercepted the Turkish flagged cargo vessel and is keeping a close eye on its movements. In the last few minutes, an Israeli military ship has come close to us and started circling our ship. They have been asking our captain about ship's cargo and about the personnel on board. Even in international waters, they are demanding we submit to their investigation. They are continuing to follow us. As the flight touches down on Egyptian soil, nobody is quite sure what to expect. The drivers are herded into Al Arish Airport's tiny passenger terminal. And with the news that the ship has arrived safely at the seaport nearby, for a moment at least, things look positive. Wonderful. This is the welcome we got from Egypt, with the roses. It's good to be here. Now we're one step closer to our goal, which was to reach the Rafah border. And inshallah, tomorrow morning we may be doing that. If they couldn't stop us thousands of miles away, uh, they're not going to stop us from 30 miles away. In fact, quite to the contrary, the authorities seem almost too enthusiastic to get the convoy over the border and into Gaza. So enthusiastic that they stamp the passports with both an entry and exit mark and tell the drivers they must pick up their vehicles and cross the border immediately. But with three quarters of the convoy volunteers mid-air or still in Syria, that is a problem. Another problem is that although the passports have been stamped, they're not being returned. The web of contradictions and confusion only grows more tangled as the hours pass. We will not move without our passports and we will not move into Gaza until our brothers and sisters are with us. Yes. The passports fail to materialize and the waiting continues into the early hours of the morning until eventually some of the volunteers lose patience. is as it was before. We have offered all sorts of compromises, including that we are prepared to go from here with our passports to be secured while our friends come to meet us. It's been met with a point blank to drive, be driven to the airport, to the ports, and to go from there across the border to Gaza, which we've refused. The fear is that the Egyptian authorities will only allow the first group to enter Gaza and seal off the border. It's a tactic that has been used in the past. Further compounding the delay is the fact that the plane has broken down in Syria. So it'll be several more hours before the next batch of drivers arrives. The protest and the waiting continues. <laughs> Alev alan ateş söner mi hiç? Özgürlük türküleri biter mi hiç? Göğe savrulan yumruklar zalim gitmedikçe iner mi hiç? Göğe savrulan yumruklar zalim gitmedikçe iner mi hiç? And finally, progress. 
The Egyptians agree to allow the convoy to wait for everyone to arrive and hand over the passports.